Hi, I'm Nils, and in a recent video I showed how to hide the wires on a wall-mounted TV like this. So it turned out great, everything looks good, it only costs $10 to do. Uh, click here to check out the link on how to do that. Now, when I did that, I didn't realize that per local code, and this may be the case with the code in your area, you can't put high voltage wires behind the walls in the, in the way that I did. You can put low vol voltage uh, wires like HDMI cords, AV cables, and audio cables, things like that. But the actual plug for the television itself needs a separate outlet. So today we're going to show you how to do that. This applies to adding an outlet to your bathroom, adding an outlet in your kitchen, your garage, anywhere like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to run a new outlet off of an existing outlet in the house on a completely finished uh, area. We're going to do this without having to cut into the sheetrock and without making a mess or painting or anything like that. Uh, we'll cut into the sheetrock just to put the new outlet, but we won't have to do any mudding or taping, that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at the tools that we're going to need to get started. And don't be overwhelmed, there's quite a few, but most of them are fairly inexpensive, simple tools. And all of them um, won't end up costing you too much money in the end. So let's take a look at that. All right, so the tools you're going to need and supplies that you're going to need to do this, uh, we're going to need a stud finder. We're going to need a faceplate, an outlet, and then a couple of single gain boxes. And these guys are the kind that are for existing work, not for new work. So they have these little tabs that grab onto the drywall. We're going to need two of those. Um, we're going to need some Romex wiring. And you'll need, the amount that you'll need is about however much the distance is from the existing outlet that you're tapping off of to the new outlet. So in my case, it's only about four feet. I've got seven or eight just to be safe. You're going to need some wire, stri uh, wire strippers and wire cutters. And this is just a kind, uh, kind that I got at a fair that I really like. Um, any wire strippers will do. Then you're going to need um, either a voltage tester or a multimeter if you've got one to make sure that the power is out and we're not working with live wires. A drywall saw or a utility knife will do the trick as well. So whichever uh, you've got handy. And then we are also going to use a larger screwdriver or a pry bar to pry the existing outlet away from the stud. And then we've also got the uh, drill or screwdriver, just whatever to take care of the screws there. And then uh, last couple of things, we've got um, fish tape. This is probably not going to be necessary if, there, if you're not working through uh, insulation or other things. Um, in my case, I don't think I'm even going to need this, but you may need fish tape. Along with that, you'll want some electrical, or electrical tape. And then if you want to, you can get one of these guys for three bucks at uh, Harbor Freight that just does the ex extending uh, magnet to grab onto the fish tape out the other side. And then lastly, we've got uh, our two things. We've got our lights so that we can work in the dark because uh, we're going to have to power the outlets off. And then we've got a reciprocating saw, or if you don't have a reciprocating or saw or a sawzall, you can use a hacksaw. That'll do the trick too. So let's, let's go ahead and start with the work now. Okay, the first thing we want to do is use the stud finder to make sure the area between our existing outlet, which is this one here, and our new outlet is clear. So just, we'll take a look. We're going to run this up the wall, and I expect we'll find a little bit of uh, electricity or currency running through like that, but we're just going to test to make sure there's no studs. If there is a fire block in there, then we're going to want to be aware of that. Um, and that's something that's going to make this job a lot more difficult. Um, you'll have to actually, you might actually have to cut in or you'll have to do pumpkin cuts around the uh, stud finder, or excuse me, around the, the fire block. And that can make things pretty difficult, but it doesn't mean it's the, this job still can't be done. So I'm just going to run this up the rest of the way up to where the outlet's going to go and we'll make sure everything's looking good. Okay, our next step is going to be to remove this, and I've already tested um, with my multimeter to make sure that there's no electricity going through here. So I'm going to pull this out, and you may or may not have a lot of slack here. Um, every, every setup's going to be a little bit different, and also what it looks like in the back is going to be different. In my case, I've got all of the wires are going directly into the um, push-in inputs here. And so I'm going to have to get those guys out, and then I've got my ground on the green screw, as always. Now this type of wire, these aren't actually meant to come out. I mean, they, these are kind of a one-way thing. You put them in, and then they, they hold on real tight. So you can try, some of them actually have a little release on the back that you can insert a pin or something into, like a small screwdriver. This one doesn't have that. And so I think we're just going to try to wriggle these guys out. And then if we can't get them out all the way, we can always uh, cut them off. But I'd prefer to get them out if we can. And they actually do come out um, a little bit. Okay, in the next part, we're actually going to see if we can get this outlet out of the wall. 
And so this is where uh, if you have a pry bar, that's going to come in handy. I'm going to use this uh, larger Phillips, uh, sorry, flathead screwdriver. I know the stud is on this side, and so I'm just going to, usually what happens is they're nailed into the wall. Um, so I'm going to get close to the top and the bottom and see if I can get a little slack. I want to be careful not to mess up the drywall here. Okay. And I don't need to get it all the way out. I just need to get it loosened a little bit, give myself a little slack. There we go. Okay, we're ready to go ahead and cut uh, the nails. There's one nail just on the bottom, um, about an inch back going into the stud right here. And I've got one nail on the top, about an inch back going on the stud. And I've just got a general purpose uh, saw blade on my reciprocating saw. So let's see if we can get these nails out. Okay, there's one and two. And you see the uh, box just went slack there, so that means we got it. Okay, the purpose of doing that is so that we can pull this guy out and then get our wires free so that we can work with them. Now that I've got these out, I'm going to take one of my uh, new work boxes. First of all, you want to make sure that the flaps or the tabs that you've got here, you want to make sure that these are all going to fit in the hole okay and that when they open up, they're not going to be against the wall or anything like that. So if you had one that was going this way, for example, that wouldn't work against the stud because that would be in the way. My stud's on this side. Um, so I'm going to pop out these little, uh, the little tabs here, give myself something to work with. There we go. And I do the same thing on the other side and feed these guys in. And that's about all we need for this. We're just going to get it to the point where it's accessible. The new wire or the old wires are in, and then we're going to go ahead and start on the top. We're going to drop the old, uh, the new Romex wire. Um, this stuff. We're going to drop this down and have it and feed it down right into here, and then tie it in with this stuff. Okay. Now up top behind the TV here, we're going to. I know I've got this uh, wall mount mounted onto the stud, which is the same stud down below that I had the actual um, the, the old outlet on. So I just need to trace where my new outlet is going to be. And this is going to be behind the TV, so I don't have to get it perfect necessarily. Of course, I do want it to look good. I'm just going to make sure I get it straight. And then I'm just going to trace around the box. And then once I've got that up, I'll use my, my jab saw here to cut out this hole. Okay, so for my next step, I took my Romex wire and then I went ahead and stripped off the uh, pieces on the top. On the bottom, I didn't strip them because I wanted to be able to fish them down without them getting sprayed or splayed and, and in the way. And I was able to, there is a pipe behind here, but I was able to get it past there. And there we go. So now I've got both ends out. I'm going to go ahead and uh, splice these guys up and feed them through this box like we talked about before. And then once those are in there, I can cap them together to connect the electricity. Okay, so I've got the wires through and now I'm actually going to need to make a, a new connection. I'm going to use the wire connectors here to um, connect two sets of wires here. I need a little bit of extra wire to do that, so I'm going to take my wire cutters. I've got plenty extra up here, so I'm just going to grab a section of this and then uh, strip off the ends. And let's take, I'll show you closer up what we're doing here. Okay, so I've stripped um, that section I just cut. I just stripped off about a half inch off the ends, uh, both ends of each of these. And then of course the ground is already bare. So now I'm going to take my wire connectors and just connect the, so one of the, this one right here is coming in from the upper outlet that we're about to install. So I'm going to connect that to one of the existing ones along with the third guy here. And I'm just going to use a standard pair of pliers to twist these guys together. There we go. And then we're going to slip a cap on and tighten it down there real good to make sure that the connection is solid between all three of these. And what that leaves us with is just one to, to put into the actual outlet itself. So we're going to do, um, what you need to remember is that black goes on brass. So you've got your brass side and your silver side. So black goes on brass, white goes on silver, and then your ground goes on green. Uh, which is down here. Uh, let's see, ground is this guy over here. So your bare ground 
goes on green. So we're gonna wire this back up, kinda like we had it before, we're just not gonna use the holes in the back to do that. Okay, we're all wired up on the bottom uh, outlet now. So again, I've got my three-way connectors that I did. Um, I've got my black going into brass, and then the white going into silver here. And then the ground, I've connected all the grounds and just put them into the one ground uh, screw there. And so now we can go ahead and cram all this back in. There we go. The outlet lined up. And then get our box put back into place. Okay, and once that's ready, um, we can go ahead and put back our, if I can find the drill. Um, this is gonna flip the tab up and start to pull it against. As soon as this clutch locks in place. There we go, I just felt it snugging in there. We'll do the same thing down here. Okay, now we're gonna tighten these screws down and then we'll put our plate back on and we'll be all set down here. All right, we've got our outlet back on down there and now we're gonna work on the outlet up here. Up here, we're really gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get the uh, wire stripped and get the ends of it exposed. We're gonna feed it in through this box um, and then we're gonna wire it up to our outlet, wherever I put that, um, and get the outlet mounted in, get the box mounted in and the tabs pulled nice and tight against the drywall put the faceplate on and then we should be all set. So let's get this thing wrapped up. One important thing before I forget, um, I did cut this wire a lot shorter. We didn't need an extra foot and a half hanging off there. There's no way you'd be able to cram that all in the box. So I cut it to a reasonable length. And then also do little hooks on the ends of your wires so that they can wrap around the screws. Unless you're gonna push them right into the inputs in the back. Uh, if you're gonna do it on the screws, just do a little wire around or wrap around it like a little hook. And that way when you attach it, um, as you tighten it, it's going to be tightening um, this hook down and not trying to slip away from you. So that makes life a little bit easier. One last item on this. Um, if you're wondering, before we had both screws uh, with wires going to them, and if you're wondering which ones to put it in now, they're both connected so it doesn't actually matter. You can put it in the top or the bottom. Just again, make sure your black is going to the brass and white's going to the silver and ground to the green. And then we're going to go ahead and put this thing in and wrap it up. And there we have it. So we've got our uh, outlet ready to go. And last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna um, turn on the power, test it, make sure everything's working good, and then we'll get everything cleaned up and put back away. Okay, so we are all done. We've got our uh, new outlet installed. We didn't have to do any drywalling or taping or anything. We just cut the hole as you saw um, and ran off our existing outlet down here. So it worked out really nicely. Um, our power is up, everything's working. I've got the TV on here and Oh, I'm gonna move this arm, there we go, and we're up and running. So uh, if you have any comments or ways to improve what I've done, I'm not a professional electrician, I'm a guy who likes to figure things out and uh, do it myself. So hopefully this helps you. If you have any comments or suggestions, improvements, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Uh, click to subscribe, there's gonna be some other videos that you can take a look at and I'd love for you to watch them. So thanks for watching, I'm Nils and good luck.